Welcome to Chem Camp. I'm Mrs. Newman, and in this video, we're going to take a look at the classic chemistry experiment known as the flame test. It's a phenomenal little lab that allows you to observe an array of delightful colors and even helps explain some of the chemistry behind a fireworks display. So let's learn a little chemistry. For this experiment, we're going to utilize aqueous solutions of ionic compounds. Now, an ionic compound, or what's also known as a salt, is a species comprised of a metal or something from the left side of your periodic table, paired with a nonmetal or something from the right side of your periodic table. Now, your metals tend to form cations or positive ions, and your nonmetals tend to form anions or negative ions. When a cation and an anion interact, they form an electrostatic attraction between oppositely charged ions, which is called an ionic bond. When salts or ionic compounds dissolve in water, they dissociate into their ions and have them freely moving around in solution. So, we've placed a variety of different ionic compounds in water, and into those solutions we have soaking wooden splints that are absorbing these cations and anions. So the only other thing we need for this experiment is a flame. First, we have strontium chloride, which causes the flame to turn bright red. Next, we have lithium chloride, and lithium chloride produces a pretty magenta pink color. After that, we have calcium chloride, which causes the flame to turn orange. Next, we have table salt or sodium chloride, which produces a yellow flame. Barium chloride creates an awesome green flame. And just wait until you see copper chloride. Copper chloride produces a spectacular blue-green flame. I mean, come on, look how pretty that is. Last but not least, we have potassium chloride. Now with this one, you have to be very observant because the color change or the true color change is very faint. So if you look closely on the outer parts of this flame, you might see a light lilac or lavender color this faint purple color, this is the true color of potassium chloride. Did you happen to notice what was different between each one of these solutions? That's right, it's the cation or the metal in each one of these ionic compounds that's different. And that cation in this solution is what is causing the flame to be a different color. Any atom or ion has its electrons organized into energy levels. When all of those electrons are located in the lowest possible energy levels, those electrons are said to be in the ground state. However, when we place these cations into this flame, we provide an electron within that cation with some energy and that electron can no longer stay where it's located. It absorbs that energy and jumps up to a higher energy level. But much like if you were to jump up in the air right now, you would fall back down to the ground, that electron also wants to relax back down to its ground state and no longer stay in its excited state. In order to do this, that electron must admit the exact same amount of energy that it absorbed to transition up to that higher energy level. When it emits this energy, it does so in the form of a photon of light. Since that photon of light corresponds to that energy needed for that electron transition, that specific energy corresponds to a certain frequency and that frequency is related to a certain wavelength. And that wavelength of light happens to fall somewhere 
on the visible spectrum. Hence, why each one of these cations has a different electron transition, producing a different amount of energy, and you see a different wavelength or color of light. Same thing occurs in a firework. I hope a little learning has occurred here and you have a fantastic day.